What's up, Precalculus students? Going to do the last homework of a lesson. We got more homeworks coming up, but they'll all start being reviewed. Uh, we talk about logarithmic scaling or like exponential scaling of a y axis. Uh, one of the examples we used in class was if we plotted data that was exponential, you know, going all the way up to 100,000, like multiplying by 10. And if we zoom stat things, these first four points are very much indistinguishable. You know, it's like, how do we know if we just visualize this data that this was exponential? I did it on Desmos as well. You know, we have these points, but you can see the first, you know, I guess three points here, this fourth point's a little bit up, but 100,000 on a linear scale is so much bigger than 10,000 on a linear scale, that it, and then so much bigger than obviously 100, 10, and 1 that can't really distinguish these three points. So what we do to look at exponential data sometimes is we adjust our y-axis scale. And I'm going to do this on Desmos. It can be done on Desmos. It can't be done on your calculator. I'm going to switch my y-axis to be a logarithmic scale. And all of a sudden, I can see my data. I have uh, the distinguished points, 1, 1, 2, 10, 3, 100, 4, 1,000, 5, 10,000, and 6, 100,000. What do we notice? This is like the key thing about the lesson is that exponential data looked on an exponentially adjusted y-axis looks linear. And that's like a key part of the lesson. Uh, so we're going to be used to the visualization of this exponential data on this logarithmic scale. We are going to be able to plot points, see exponential data becomes linear. This linear data on this exponential scale points to an exponential growth function. If we went the opposite way and we are decaying, we would see a negative slope. We would see a negative slope, which would then uh, point us towards a exponential decay. And uh, that's it. Um, so let's get into it. The way we plot points on this exponential scale is different. It's not on a linear basis, so the points aren't separated evenly. We go and what we want to do in the future, and this is what uh, people had to do, is we don't really look at 10 to the 0, 10 to the 1st. We'd rather just look at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, but it would represent 10 to the 0, 10 to the 1st. But we understand that if we kind of exponentially adjust our Ys, these lines are going to help us put the points in the right spot. Each of these lines represents like a multiple of 10, I guess, uh, rather just like one unit up. So this would be two, this would be three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This would be 20, this would be 30, all the way up to 100. This would be 200, 300, this is a key point, like this is not 110, this is 200. This would be 2,000, 3,000, all the way up to 10,000, okay? So if we wanted to plot the point A, 10, 2,000, we would plot it right there. This is A. 22, uh, this is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So 22, 250 would be right around here. 31 would actually be right there. What would look like the x-axis on a graph of an x and y linear axis would actually be 1 uh, as a y value if you talk about this exponential scaling. 38, 17, so 32, 34, 36, 38, 17 would be somewhere close to 20, somewhere around here. That's D, and then E, 46, 5,000, so 42, 44, 46. 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. Okay. <clears throat> What's the point A? It's most likely uh, 1, 300. Point B is most likely 2, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. 
what's the point C? Most likely four comma, I don't know, 15-ish. It's probably, it's probably not 15. It's probably like 13, 14 or 13. It's not 10 and a half. 10 and a half would be very close. So like, yeah, 15 is the best. Okay, um, this is exponential data. You can see there's a common ratio of a times three. If we were to plot this data on a linear uh, xy axis, we would see the exponential growth data. But if we exponentially scale our y axis, that data would then look uh, linear. So exponential data on a linear axis, exponential data on an exponential axis looks linear. So this would be uh, the right trip. Like this is this is the data on a linear axis right here. This is like correct if this was a linear axis, but here this is on our logarithmically scaled logarithmic axis, exponential axis. It's really an exponential axis rather than if this was zero, one, two, three, four, that'd be a logarithmic axis, but like, don't worry about it. You're gonna be fine. Write an equation for the exponential function that models the data. Like we can use our calculator here if we wanted to, but We've practiced uh, writing out equations after day three. If this is an exponential data, we have two points that we can use. Probably the first two points are easiest. Uh, you know what B is, it's the common ratio, it's, it's three. If you wanted to do two equations, you'd have 30 equals A, B to the 10. You'd have, oh, this might be a little bit more complicated. 90 equals, a, B to 20. Um, again, we can use stat edit, which I'm going to do in a second, but we can also divide these two equations if we want to get three equals B to the 10th. I just kind of divided the, the, the top into the bottom. The A's will go away. We get B to the 10th. So actually B is not um, three. Uh, as I thought, b is 3 to the 1 tenth. If b is 3 to the 1 tenth, we can find a. It's just going to be our value at 0. If I divided by 3 to get to 0, I would get uh, 10. You can kind of see that if you plug this into, say, this equation, you get 30 equals a times b to the 10th, the 10 and the 1 tenth will cancel, we get A equals 10. If you wanted to, to see these values as decimal forms, we get 1.116. If you wanted to stat edit, run a regression, you don't need all of the points. Two points are sufficient. that calc exponential regression. I'm not going to uh, save it. We get this 10, 1.116. 1.116 is 3 to the 1 tenth. A is 10. Okay. Now, if we have y equals 10 times 1.116 to the x, we can see um, how it's linear on a logarithmic, this exponential axis, one of the key kind of conceptual connections is being able to take the log of both sides and understand using log properties, how log y equals, okay, we know the product log property turns into a sum of two logs. And the other property we know is that the exponent can move to the front. And all of a sudden we kind of see this idea of a linear situation on a logarithmic axis on like an exponentially scaled axis. We have like a Y intercept and we have like a slope on a logarithmic axis. I ask you to do this also with log base three. It's probably going to be helpful to write this as three to the one tenth. to the x, 
why do I ask you to do that? Because I want you to be able to simplify this a little bit more than just saying log base three of B. This actually can simplify if we remember our log rules. We got log base three of 10 plus, I'm gonna go ahead and put the X down. We have log base three of three to the one tenth. We actually get that log base three of three to the one tenth. If you know logs on due exponents is just one tenth. So I have log base three of 10 plus X times one tenth. Okay, um, that's it, we're good. If you see this type of equation, you know that that refers to an exponential equation. You see the slope is this positive number. This value is positive. Since it's positive, we see the positive slope on our logarithmic axis. That refers to a exponential growth. This positive slope leads to this value for an exponential growth being bigger than one. If we saw this value was negative, if this like slope value was negative, that would confirm to a B value, negative sloping on a logarithmic axis would uh, correspond with an exponential decay. Exponential decays, if that's negative, then this value B would have to be less than one or between zero and one. If we are multiplying our, our first value by uh, a fraction, our values are gonna get less and less and less, okay? That's the other key concept. Um, if we have a table of data where we're taking the log of the values, we can just kind of set something up to understand what, what is this showing us? Well, like if log base two of f of x equals, let's say three, we know to get rid of a log, we can use a power. We realize that the f of x values would be two to this power. So this would be eight. This would be two squared, which is four. Do you need the day three quizzes? I have the day three quizzes. Do you need day three? This would be two to the fourth, which is 16. This would be two to the fifth, which is 32. This would be two to the sixth, which is 64. So what we notice is that if our table uh, we have a logarithm of our y values and it appears linear, well then this refers to exponential data because like the table of their log of values follow like an arithmetic, a linear pattern. Obviously, if we look at the y values, we can see that, you know, that's an exponential data. Okay, uh, we want you to write it in terms of a times b to the x and write it in the semi-log scale of log y equals mx plus b. Uh, let me just do it with this one, it's easiest. Let's remember how to write the equations. If you know the initial value when x is zero, it'll be b to the zero, which is one. That gives you your a value. This is your a value when x is zero. So you got y equals two times b is always the, the common rate. Oh, sorry. It's not two, it's four. The b value is your multiplier, your common ratio times two times two. You can kind of see the common ratio in this log base. So that would be the equation of the data. And if I take the log base two of y, I would have the log base two of four times two to the x. I'm gonna just do it all at once and I'm gonna put it in the right form. Um, 
maybe I'll do two steps just so you see it. We'll have log base two of two to the X plus log base two of four, log base two of Y equals, it's gonna be easy guys, X plus two. This equation, you see the linear pattern, the B value is two, that's the Y intercept, the slope is one, well, there you go. There is the slope of one. There is the y-intercept of two because we're using log base two. It kind of makes sense here. You know, this data being linear, this logarithmic data being linear refers to the original data being exponential. Uh, let's do the other one. Let's see if we can go the other way around. Uh, log base three of f of x equals the y-intercept is five my slope is negative two i bet you this is the equation of the logarithmic data well i mean it is but like how can i go the other way and convert this into uh, the exponential data y equals or f of x equals well watch me take three to the power of both sides we get f of x equals three to the negative two x plus five. That's all in the exponent. Now let's use some exponent rules. This could be written as three to the negative two x times three to the fifth. I don't like this already. No, this is right. This is correct. Uh, three to the fifth. is 243. What is the other exponent rule? I can write this product of my power as three to the power to the power, which turns into one ninth to the X. Look at that. We went on our logarithmic data. We got the linear equation of our logarithmic data we then convert it into our exponential decay. We can see the negative slope. We can see the exponential decay. Um, let's go the other way. Let's just show the other way. If log base three of f of x say equals five, take three to the power, take three to the power, and you get the f of x values being three to the fifth, Three cubed is 27. How do we get from 243 to 27? We multiply by a ninth. We get three to the first. We get three to the negative first. We get three to the negative third. That, don't make that mistake, Mr. Messer. Don't make that mistake, students. We get 127th. We can see the common ratio. We can see the first value. We can write the equation 243 uh, times one ninth to the X, we could convert that to our logarithmic data, but we can see we can go both ways, which is awesome. Uh, it's really awesome. I didn't think about doing that. When I created this homework, I kind of wanted you to do the F of X, write the exponential, then convert it to logarithmic. But look how it's like, it just works out really nice. And I say log, but like log with a specific base. Uh, what's going on here? Um, my opening value is five. I have a common ratio of six fifths. I'm just making sure six times six fifths should be 7.2. Okay, so it's good. Um, watch how I could take the log base six fifths of both sides, we could, I'm just gonna predict that the log base six fifths of my F of X values are going to be a Y intercept of five and a slope of six fifths. Uh, no, ooh, ah, uh, hmm. 
I didn't take the log six fifths of the numbers, so I I don't know what this is. Let's figure it out. It's actually one if we look at the log data. But you know, I actually let's just let's just do what I told you to do, which is to take the log of the data. So let's not do log base six fifths. Let's rather just take the log. So we are scaling our values in a base 10 system, but I, I don't like the connection that we see there. We'll have log six fifths X plus log five. So that'd be like the slope. That would be the Y intercept if I logged this data. Okay. Uh, what else did I prompt? Okay. okay. I see a logarith logarithmic scaling, this exponential scaling. I see my data um, shows up linear, which means we're talking about exponential data. If exponential data is plotted on an exponential scale, it looks linear. Okay. We see that the slope is negative. We see that my values are decreasing. This leads us to the conclusion that the data is an exponential decay. So this guy right there, exponential growth, that B value is bigger than one, not going to be correct. This, not an exponential decay. This is an exponential decay, but uh, with a vertical translation, this is a linear. This would be the exponential equation whose data plotted would give us these points on an exponential uh, scale. Uh, group of students, this is the last question. Group of students plotted six points. They used the data to create an exponential regression, which is most likely to be the residual plot. Well, here's what you're going to come uh, together as a conclusion, that since this data is linear, on this exponential scale that this data points to an exponential growth equation on a, on a linear axis. So that means an exponential regression is going to fit perfectly in this data. If an exponential regression fits very well, a residual should be very, very close to zero they should not form a pattern. And so that's why I pick B. This combines our day two with our day four. Like this is exponential data. If I did a model and our data was off, we're not gonna see a pattern of underestimates, overestimates, um, or this, these are overestimates, these are underestimates. All underestimates, we are gonna see just like some overs and unders randomly and our residuals being close to zero. All right. That's it, guys. That's it for uh, homeworks on lessons. Uh, last lesson quiz uh, on Wednesday, last unit test on Friday.